Okay, so let's just go through an example together about labeling the transverse wave again, and then also using the information there to produce um, a calculation for a wave speed. So we should be able to label these things on from before, our wavelength being the distance from a peak to a peak, or in this example, a trough to a trough, and the amplitude being the height, again, measured in meters, like the wavelength from that zero rest line up to the peak or down to the trough. Um, here's how you might see them as symbols. So we might see that amplitude written as an A, and we might see that wavelength written as a lambda. That is the symbol for it, right? And we put those together into that wave speed equation, V representing wave speed or wave velocity, equaling the frequency times by the wavelength. So let's plug and play some numbers in that so we can see how this equation works. So if I told you that wavelength was 50 centimeters from crest to crest or from trough to trough on the bottom, and I told you the frequency was 20 hertz, we can plug those numbers into, into the equation, yeah? Now that wavelength, you're gonna notice has a prefix in front of it saying centi. We're gonna have to change that prefix into just meters, 50 centimeters to 0 0.15 meters. That frequency of 20 hertz or 20 waves, per se, um, waves passing um, every second, yeah? That can work for us just fine. So if we change that to our 0 0.5 meters as I have there, and we keep that as our 20 hertz, we can do our 20 times 0 0.5 and calculate our wonderful wave speed of 10 meters per second, right? So there's our two equations we need to get used to. Remember, I don't really like the triangles, but there they are. We've got wave speed equals distance over time, and we've got our wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. So which calculation you'll do will be based on what information you've been given. If you've been given a distance and a time, you'll use that equation I've put there on the left. If you've got the frequency and wavelength, you'll clearly use the one on the right. It's context to what information you've been given as to which equation you'll use, okay? So you're gonna have to practice the wave speed equation with all of the different calculations I've set you out there. You've got a lot to practice there, yeah? Loads and loads of wave speed calculations is the way you're gonna get this to stick in your brain and embed it for yourself, okay? So here's some final questions you can answer in your exercise book for me. Um, what are the two types of waves and how do the particles in the wave move? So these are recap questions, retrieval practice. How do we measure waves? What are the symbols and the units? What are the two speed equations and what method would you use to measure wave speed? Okay, so have a go at these. The answers exist in all of the videos we've previously watched and the notes we've made together. Try and do this from memory. If you need to, check back in your notes. If you need to, replay this video. Remember, you can watch this over and over and over. Okay, guys, let's give it a go. And after you've done that, make sure you've clearly, most of us have probably done this already, make sure you've clearly got written the two wave speed equations. You want to write them down, have a go at the rearrangements as well, yeah, and annotate them with the symbols that we've met and also the units of measurement like meters, hertz, and all those sorts of things, okay? Good job, everybody.